Well, it's day two of the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Expo and look who we've caught up with at the Gulf Western Oil Stand. It's uh, top door slam Australian drag racing legend Victor Bray. And uh, Victor, welcome to the uh, Expo. Uh, you were here yesterday. Have you had a chance to look around? And what do you think of it? Yeah, mate, we've had a bit of a wander around. I think it's a great show. Uh, I think every second year they swap from here to Sydney, don't they? And um, this is only about the second one I've been in Melbourne. Uh, we're having a great time. Everybody's here. You know, a lot of cars here, a lot of, a lot of cars from motorsport stuff's here and that... Uh, and uh, every, virtually every brand in the aftermarket market and some, a lot of OEM stuff's here as well. A lot of overseas stuff, China, Thailand, you know, Taiwan. So uh, it certainly takes a, a lot of looking around and there's a lot of interesting stuff there. And anybody that's involved in uh, any sort of motorsport or car fanatics with restoration, because uh, of course they've got the collision up the other end, which gives you all the paint and all the stuff. So it's a, it's a very interesting show for myself. And uh, I'm only here for three days and I'll probably get to see most of it. Well, it is that big, isn't it? I mean, people don't realise the scope of this thing. I mean, it's uh, talking to some of the overseas visitors, they're saying this is this is a genuine international event now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I went to them a lot, uh, many years ago. I don't know if they, you know, if they were the first ones or the first few, but it was um, was much smaller. And it's still as exciting, still good because everyone was sort of going along to it and not knowing. But everyone's got very professional at it nowadays. Some of these stands must cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up, you know, and. Uh, yeah, and they've got all their staff here and all the, you know, the marketing guys are here, the CEOs are here, and they're all, uh, all on the stands giving information and uh, keeping everybody informed, which, I mean, there's, there's not much, no matter what you want to know here, you can find it out. No matter what, any parts, any parts of engines, spark plugs, cars, you know, anything you like, leads, heads, whatever it is, there's nothing that you can't find out what, what's going on here and uh, get the information on the new brands and a lot of new products launched here as well, a lot of new promotions launched here as well, so it's certainly a weekend that uh, I never miss. Mm-hmm. Wandering around, I mean, you run a racing team, you've got a very big workshop operation up there in Queensland. Have you seen any toys, anything that you think, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, or have you got everything you need already? Mate, when they shut it at five o'clock in the afternoon, I'd love to come in here with a semi, there's a lot of stuff in here, I'd love it. But, uh, yeah, some of the stuff, I mean, the, the workshop gear, the workshop tooling, the stuff that's around. I mean, I've seen stuff here that's, that I've never seen before and it's been actually been manufactured. The guys have been making it for 10 years and I've never seen it. So, you know, you walk around, they, they bring all the new products out, there's a lot of the old stuff here that's very, very popular. Uh, you know, you see a lot of workshop equipment is something that's, that's evolving all the time, especially with the technology that's in all the, the cars nowadays is evolving as well. So yeah, a lot of the stuff, I mean, Ben's into the turbo thing, you know, with all the engine management and that. And he, he sees stuff around here that he's really interested in. It's sort of cutting edge stuff, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff being done on 3D printers nowadays. We've got a full 3D print shop at home in the workshop. So we're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, Ben's in all the, the late model, uh, you know, tune up gear and all that sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, me, I like the old, uh, the old, old school stuff, and there's plenty of that here too, you know, and, uh, and restoration gear. So, mate, there's, there's something here for everybody, and uh, it's certainly a show that's growing every year, and uh, it's, it's, abs- it's an absolute necessary thing, necessary part of a uh, promotional of, of just about any company nowadays to be at the AAA show. Last time we saw you down here in Melbourne was out at Calder uh, for the Australian Drag Racing Nationals. While we were out there we caught up with the uh, CEO of Andra and uh, spoke about the situation in the sport. Yep. At the moment, I mean, it's, uh, I suppose the sport divided is a sport weakened and yep. that's what the situation is at the moment. You guys, the top door slammer guys, have been very supportive sort of of both sides. Yep. Um, What's the current state of drag racing? And are we any closer to getting things back together again so that uh, the sport can move on? Good news is, yes, they're talking. So that, that's great, you know. And uh, I mean, both sides obviously would like to have the one the one competition. Uh, all the races would like to have the one competition. Um, you know, there's been, some, there's been some issues with, uh, you know, funding, financial, you know, directional stuff. And even there's been some personality clashes from both sides. And that's sort of what's caused it. But I mean, both sides are, are very professional. Uh, Andrew and uh, 400 Thunder, and they both understand that they have to somehow put this back together. But so, I think they're at a stage now where, where probably both sides are willing to compromise. Let's just hope they can compromise enough to get it all back as one, and uh, then we can all start moving forward. And drag racing over the years, since my time here for you know 30, 40 years, has been. Um, you see the ups and the downs in the sport. You know, well, this is like this isn't a normal up and a down. This is like a, a bit of a hitch in the sport. You know, and and uh, we just got to get over it, get it, get it solved, and it has to be solved at the top level. You know, I mean, the races we, we can assist uh, where we can when we're asked, but it's not really up to us. It's up to the guys that run the race tracks. I mean, they've all got massive financial input into the tracks. You know, all the race track owners that you know that they they risk massive amounts of money to run events. And uh, the, the, they're worth heaps and heaps of money, the, 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 the facilities and that. So, you know, they've all got an agenda that they have to, you know, they've got to keep returning funds, they've got to keep the places open, keep them alive. And, um, yeah, so I think that that's a lot of the issue when it first started. And it sort of it drifted, I think, a little bit into um, a bit of personal stuff, you know. But I think now that all the, they're, they're all level heads, everyone's involved level heads. And I think 
it's starting to sort of work that way that uh, I think there's somewhere light at the end of the tunnel and I'm hoping that they can certainly put something together and get something back together in the next, hopefully before next season. So for you, what's your next event? Uh, we run uh, Good Friday at Willow Bank at the Sandoz Super 3. Uh, it's a fantastic event. It's run at a time of the year when the weather's really good. It's hot during the day, warm during the day. The track warms up, the air comes in at night. It's sort of nearly as good as the Winter National. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good event. We're actually, it's only, by the time we get our, all our gear back up to Brisbane, we've only got three days to get it all ready and get it, because we want to test a lot of gear. Uh, Gulf Western's got behind the, the Nitro Champs in Sydney, the, the Sandoz Nitro Thunder in Sydney and, uh, and the Winter Nationals. And we like to put a good show there, of course, you know. We've got a lot of good stuff coming. We ordered it last November when we were over in the States and it's just started to filter through now. It takes a while to get a lot of stuff out, especially at the start of the season when the Americans are all ordering their stuff as well. <coughs> Pardon me, so uh, a lot of that gear's come through. It's sitting at home there. We've just got to sort of get what we can in the car, go and test it this weekend, keep our fingers crossed and uh, Somehow I don't like seeing the back of that Monaro as much as I'm seeing it. So um, we're going to try and catch Zap. He's the class act at the moment. And uh, you know, he gives a good target and someone to, to aim at, that's for sure. But uh, he, he's a tough boy to catch. No doubt about that. Well, uh, thanks for coming down here. A lot of people are very keen to see you. Hopefully we can get to the situation where we get the sport back on an even keel again because hopefully relive the days of you know, 10, 15 years yeah, ago yeah. when you had 40,000 out at Calder Park. It. Um, it's, it's a spectacular form of motorsport. Yeah. You've been a great uh, ambassador for the sport over the years. Good luck for the rest of the season for both you and Ben, but for now, yeah. thanks for joining us in pit lane. Thank you very much. And I can't wait. I just hope I'm around to see the next rise in the sport. That makes both of us. See you, mate. Thanks, mate.